Hi, this slide is a, a very subtle but powerful and important concept slide. Uh, it, it addresses the ability of a customer or distributor or manufacturer to forecast demand within a channel uh, and what effect that has on fill rates and excess stock. Um, so I'll tell you a story. Back when Walmart was pioneering what they called continuous replenishment or quick response, first on a pilot test basis with the textile manufacturing uh, uh, industry uh, from 83 to 86, they found out that if the manufacturers would get product to the central distribution center just in time, and the central distribution center was doing cross-docking and could get it to the stores just in time, uh, at the store level, uh, their problem was now, okay, because I receive stuff every day, I only have to forecast what am I going to sell for on, on, on blue cotton shirts 15 by 35 tomorrow. And let's say they said, well, uh, we think we're going to sell 99 of them. Uh, and in fact, they sold 100 or 98. They found out that they're, they're, the deviation, you know, this is uh, time going here out to three months or more. And this is the deviation on the, on the vertical axis. They found that they only had to forecast a day out. The deviation was very small, and what's more, uh, they could instantly correct it. So if you were one short, one shirt long or short, you would that would be reflected in the next day replenishment activity. Uh, so the fill rate stayed very high, but there was no excess stock. At the other extreme, if they bought you know a truckload of stuff uh, that you know would last for three months, they could get four turns a year simplistically on the line. They, that would put them out here, and they found out that when it came time to rebuy the line, that for weeks they had items that they had forecasted would be selling that weren't. They were selling slower than the, they had forecasted, so they were still in stock. But they had other items that had been inexplicably, uh, randomly selling faster than they forecasted, and they started to stock out more and more and more all the time. So by the time they, re, they went to rebuy, they had been giving lousy customer service in these items, and they've been financing extra inventory in these items, as opposed to this wonderful situation right here. And so it was a, it was a supply chain math breakthrough. Now that's all fine and good, but how does, that, how does that apply to distributors? Let me first erase this stuff here. Well, I, I know plenty of distributors that think that, you know, an item that turns four times a year is a good item, and they don't realize that the hidden excess stock costs and the hidden stock out costs that they have. Uh, so in theory, if a distributor could buy more frequently, it's not the issue of of, you know, we, we all think about landed costs. I don't want to get the absolute lowest landed cost, but sometimes it might be worth paying a little bit higher landed cost if the turns go up even more than the earn goes down, but more importantly, the excess stock and stock out problems, you know, diminish dramatically too. Well, if you have a customer, if you're a distributor, you have a customer who says, well, I'm really big, so I'm going to buy direct then that customer risks being out here on this whale tail because if they gave that volume to the distributor, the distributor plus all the other volume they're buying for all the other customers would be moving in uh, this way with more and more turns and having better and better fill rates and, uh, and less and less excess stock for the channel. Another application of this model would be, gee, where, where is the exact size and space for master distribution capacity in a given channel? Uh, where a, a master distribu distributor would be drawing straight truckloads, container loads, selling assorted skids and cases to distributors, so that the distributors could ideally be getting 12 turns or more a year and not having big excess stock and stock out problems. But again, we'll, we'll come back and visit fill, what I call fill rate economics uh, multiple times throughout, but this is a, a first introductory slide to this concept of fill rate economics. Thank you.